Welcome to Autodesk Product Design and Development Series for Fusion 360. Place the concept sketch at the center of the saw's foot and at the origin of the model. This becomes a common reference point for everyone on the project. When you start a new design this way and your canvas isn't the correct size, you can always calibrate it to fit. Let's turn on the sketches. I've pre-built these curves for your reference. Notice the 388 millimeter dimension. This is super helpful to know just how big the model is and stay in proportion. Now a couple of details about splines. Lay out three points and select the green check mark to accept the shape. Now you can see the drag handles, so be careful as you move them. The spline is live and so are the other elements in the sketch. As we're moving either the spline points themselves or the tangent handles, we can define the shape that we're looking for. So you can see as I'm adjusting the tangent handle or the spline point itself, I can make design decisions to approximate the shape that I'm looking for. Be careful though, as your sketches are live, like I said. So now you can see where I've, I've automatically constrained the sketch tangent handle to another piece of geometry inside the sketch. So I'll delete that constraint, and now I'm able to move my tangent handle freely. So in order to avoid the tangent handles automatically connecting to other pieces of geometry in your, in your sketch, you can use control on a PC and command on a Mac while you're moving them. This will override the automatic constraint setting. So now that we've got our curve set up, we can dive in a little bit deeper. We're really just going to get the close approximation for the, the sketch. This will become the overmold later on as we develop our shapes. And so once we have the sketch built, a little bit of setup in order to do that, a little bit of design geek in me wanting to get exactly right. And so in, in order to get it exactly right, I, I often use the curve comb plots as well. Right click and select toggle curvature display. Curvature display is going to show you the quality of your curve. It's, it's really important for developing 3D shapes. Now, whether it's T-splines or, or surface or solids modeling, uh, good 2D input it will yield really great 3D input. So let's take a, a little closer look at how I constructed that three-point spline. Three points are all you need to define the spline and give you the right information that you need. So let's take a look at another way uh, to build, and, and this is this happens, right? As you're trying to define your shape, it's it's natural to want to click and try and define the shape with the spline points as you're laying them out. Well, resist the temptation to do this because you get three additional points that you have to keep track of, and, and what happens is this just becomes cumbersome. Watch what happens when I turn on the curvature display handles here. Uh, the curve is not so bad. It's a little loose in the corner uh, compared to this curve. You can see this is a, a more accelerating curve, a little bit more snap to it. Uh, but what this is where the real problem is. So I've got the three additional points to keep track of. And so I'm making some modification with the handles. And you're seeing I'm getting a little bit of an inflection or lump inside the curvature display. This would really affect the quality of any downstream geometry. So this is just good best practices for any kind of curve modeling and setup that you work with. So pay attention to that. Less is more. Use three where you can. Really get at the shape with the tangency handles and, and resist the temptation to add additional points.